We're going to make an example for a 3D puff foam design, which we intend to embroider on caps. We will use this image here, which is a JPEG image. By zooming in, zooming in we will realize that the image is quite low in resolution. It's not really favorable to start to work on a file like this. What I will do is I will create nice vector shapes out of this image, which will help me later on to do a good job when I'm digitizing. We will use the pen tool. With the pen tool, we have various drawing modes available. I will use two of them. One of them is quick draw, which is, I set it up as a default one, and the other one is Bezier. Let me start here by clicking a point, which will be with quick draw, a straight point, and then I will switch to Bezier by pressing B on the keyboard. And the Bezier technique is always about clicking and dragging. So I click and drag in order to get the shape right, and then I pull this handle a little bit back. Now I will use uh, one point to click here, and then I'll click one point here, click and drag. And this, this is the way to work with the uh, Bezier mode. Now here we have like corner. Let me switch to quick draw and place a straight point here place a straight point here, and Bezier, again, will click and drag and place the shape there. So this is the way to move forward. As a next step, we will round up the sharp edges here a little bit. So let me select the segment and we will zoom in here. You see this corner here. What I'll do is I'll go to my note editing tool. I will add maybe uh, two points here and then we will convert all of these points into straight points. We will then choose uh, the rounded corner tool and you will see that I can now I can now make this a little bit round here looks nice and also helps uh, when I'm uh, digit not digitizing but converting the image now this one here will do the same thing so let me pull it out a little bit to the side here Now the shape itself, if we look at the design, we have black or dark parts, the black parts and yellow parts. The yellow part, I will do this as a full complex fill. Therefore, what I intend to do is, I will select the shape that I just drew and I will use a, a tool called the offset tool. With Shift O, I can access that tool. I will make a copy of the offset and I will slide the segment. I will now click on the shape and you see I can I can offset this one here. So let me let me place the sh the second shape like in the middle of the black area I see here. Once this is done, you will see that I have a second shape going inside. This will be my complex fill shape. Next step is I will draw the two R's here and I will do this with having satin stitches in mind. Therefore, when I draw, I will use my pen tool again. We will draw like blocks, blocks of or columns because these columns will 
be satin stitches once uh, I convert them. We'll do a shape here, draw here as well, and we can here make this one like so. So here we will have this block go straight down here and with O I can connect the shape. Continue with this one here, it's like a serif, go straight. So here I'm using the uh, quick draw drawing method. Let's go here, draw the shape until here. So my setting, I want to have this as a block. That's why I more or less cut it off there. Arriving here and with O, we connect the shape there as well. And we come to the last part of this R, going straight over there. Here we have like curvy shape, going down to the serif part and coming here. With O, I close the shape as well. Let's see what we have so far. We have this R done, and we will now proceed with the second R. One of the things we need to keep in mind uh, when we convert this into satin stitches, this will be 3D foam, is the intersections. These are the areas where the foam uh, tends to split. What I'm going to do here is to avoid the splitting is to create some oh, bumps and that will cover up the split. Now, in order to do this, I we see here the artwork segment is uh, one piece. I will break this apart. Okay, and that will give me as a result individual segments. Now the splitting will pro happen, this will be a satin stitch. So what I do here is I select this segment and I will add with the uh, vertex select tool, we will add one, two, uh, three, four nodes. And then I will select this two here. I'll create a little bump here, like so move this point over there. We will also create the same kind of bump in this area where it's going to split. I'm going to add a one, two, three, four nodes there. Select this two and move them slightly inside what will be this column here. Then where else are we going to have the splitting? We will have it here. Therefore, we will add a node here, one here, and one here, and one here. Select uh, these two and move them in there. This one, perhaps we can move them ever so slightly to the side, should be good. All right, we have done the bumps in this R. Let me align these two nodes more towards the where the column is. So let's do the same thing with this R here. We select this column. Okay, well, we see here again it's one piece, so we will break this break this up. And now I can select the individual pieces. We will add a node here, one here, and uh, two more. And select these two and move them towards that area. Good. Then we select this column, add the points, one here, one here, 
and two additional ones there. Select these two and move them ever so slightly inside the this column here. The last one we need to do is this here. We zoom in a little bit. We will add, basically we have already one here. Let's, let's add one here and uh, maybe one here. And we can now move this one up, this one up, convert this to straight. Okay, should be good. Good. These are the bonds that I drew here. Now that we are done with drawing the shape of the 3D foam design, we are ready to convert this into embroidery. Now this is going to be embroidered on caps, so I need to consider a couple of things here. The cap has a seam in the middle, so I will choose or I find out the center of this design here. You see, that's why I placed the uh, guideline there. And uh, what I like to do when I have uh, embroidery on a cap, I like to cover the, the seam area with some satin stitches. I will do that by uh, Taking the rectangle tool, there are various ways I can do that. And I will create a, a column right there where the seam is going to be. I can uh, place this, uh, this point a little bit up there and this one a little bit down here. And now we will convert this into a satin. So I'll place an angle line here, an angle line at the end, like so. We have our satin stitches. Now the uh, satin stitches should be, or not should be, but I like to, I like to have them as jagged, uh, jagged edge. That's why we go into the segment settings, and you see here we have the jagged section. I will choose to be checked on both sides. Let's have a look how this looks like. Okay, this looks quite interesting, quite good. Maybe uh, I don't need to extend it that much. Let's do it uh, too. Okay, this is fine. And uh, probably it's a good idea as well to choose a, a pattern that, uh, like the random pattern, that will stitch in stitches in the middle. Well, we have done our uh, covering up the seam here. Next step is the uh, the image itself. If I show it up here, the yellow area. So I said that I'm going to create a complex fill. The complex fill will be um, this shape here, and uh, since it's going to be on a cap. The, the stitching should happen from the center to the right and from the, the center to the left. That's why I need to split up the, uh, the, uh, the shape here in two sections. And I'll do that with the, let me see, I will, the stitch angle will be like so. If my stitch angle, I, I need to consider my stitch angle. So let me draw with the pen tool, maybe in a, another color, like this blue here with a pen tool, I'm going to, I'm going to draw basically the stitch angle. Okay, that will be that will be like a guideline for that. And this is where I'm going to to split the segment here. Let's change this one back to needle number one. I I will choose the slice tool and I will slice Let's slice it here from this corner, from here to, yeah, let's use this corner here. And then I'm selecting the segment. And once this is sliced, I will break it up. And you see here, now I end up with, with two pieces. I can now 
start with, uh, let's say, this one and convert this into a complex field, which is this year. I just right click on it and you see it's converted into a complex field. I'll place the angle line, which is here, and I have my stitches going that way. This is good. I need to be, be uh, considering the start point, which is here, and I want this to be embroidered from left to right. That's why I place the endpoint in this area here. That's good. Let me hide the, uh, the satin here. And now we we are we are located here. The density is is okay, 040. I think I will, we can open it up a little bit. Let's say 045 should be okay. And I, I'm going to travel now with running stitches along the edge to this side here because we will embroider the other piece from the center towards the left side. That's why I need to travel. I will use my run stitch tool and let's zoom in to really see where, where we are traveling. This, will, this part will be covered by, uh, uh, by a steel stitch later, so no problem. I travel here. Let's travel all the way around the edge to the side here. Arriving here, and we are here now. Press Enter. Then I'll select the second piece, convert this into a complex fill. We have, again, the stitch angle, which will be this one here. And we will place the endpoint to be here. So we are done with our two complex fields. It may be a good idea to overlap a little bit. That's why what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the, uh, the points a little bit towards the left side. Before I do this, I will go to my vertex select tool. Let me add a point here. I'm doing this just for security reasons. And you see, I'm going to move this one slightly to this side. I'll do the same at the bottom area here. Let me add a one point here and we will move this one slightly towards the inside. So we, we create a little overlap there. Let's have a look in a slow motion. We will hide the outlines. And uh, let me switch on the seam covering here. Slow motion, we'll do that in 3D as well. Zoom back a little bit and pull the slider. So let's go back. You see we have the seam covering the seam. Then we have the complex fill from the right from the center to the right, and then the complex field from the center to the left. That is the first step. Let me change now the needle colors, the thread numbers, uh, colors for needle number one. one. Needle, needle number one, we have done that for the satin seam and the complex fields here. So this will be a yellow color. Let's choose this one. Now we have everything done here in yellow. We will need to have the, you see here, the outer border done <clears throat> in a steel stitch in black color. Now that's this area here. Select this one. Let's change this to needle number two and we will convert this into a steel stitch. We have our steel stitch there. We will change the steel inset to go 
let's try 90% and let's see the image background that looks that looks quite good that looks good it matches the uh, the design itself when there are some areas like you see here this one here where I could change the, the kind of curvature here I will add I will hide the stitches here I will add an anchor point here and an anchor point here and we will convert this one here into symmetric and we will make this one slightly slightly uh, changing the shape a bit and as a result we have I think this is a much better a much better curve let's push it up a slightly towards there this looks, this looks good now we are done with our steel stitch I can add let's see the density we have 0 040 which is okay and I will add a, a lock stitch at the end we should also add a lock stitch at the beginning choose basic this is the steel stitch border around it let's take care now of these little dark or black elements inside the letters R. We will create them as normal satin segments. Let's hide everything we have done so far. I will use the pen tool to draw the, sa the shapes and I will simplify them. Make this one here. With O we close the shape. We have this one and let's take care of this one here make a normal a rectangle slightly bigger okay and we will now convert this to satin press D add angle lines to this one and can hide the background image select this one here add angle line one here and one on top we have our two satin segments there I would like to to have a little tighter density because they are so small and it's good to give them let's say 0 36 millimeter I would also like to add a perpendicular underlay to them. We will also need to have a trim command and also a trim command not at the start. Let's 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 do the trim command at the end of the segment. We also need to have a uh, the lock stitches here you see we have a tool called end lock we use this one here now let's switch on the backdrop image again we can now duplicate those two and add them to this side I will need to make sure that the yeah it's quite okay move this one a bit up here and we are done with those elements as well let's switch on everything back on this one we need to be on we have now completed this part the last part is the 3d foam part looking at the backdrop image you see the two r's this is this is the part we will do with 3d foam now let's switch off all the segments that we have done so far we will hide them those and we can also hide the backdrop image because we have the 
the two R's drawn already. I will change to them to color for needle number two. We will create satin stitches. So I want to embroider this from center to left. We will start with this R here and use a run stitch. We will start here with one, two, three, four little stitches. This is my lock, lock stitches at the beginning. And I like to travel with an open zigzag underneath uh, the part which will be covered by the, the foam later on. So basically I'm tacking down the foam to the cap and arriving here. Now you see the serif here, I will create under the ends at the, here and here I create little patches with the satin tool. We will use quite a tight density here, 0 0.2. And those little rectangles I will start slightly outside, you see here, and then elongating and then getting in inside the column. We have our satin. I like to have, th the purpose of this is to cut the foam, so you can really cut the foam, tear it from this side. So here I want the stitches to be in a straight way, but on the inside I want the stitch, stitches to go in a jagged way. That's why I, I'll go to the segment settings, segment properties. We will go to the jagged part. I will switch on the second side. Let's apply. That's what I want. It's a little bit too long. Let's not exaggerate. Let's change this value here to two. And perhaps we will Let's see what happens if I change this to minus one. Yes, this, this is what I want. Now we are here. We will do, do exactly the same at the other end. Travel with, uh, with some open up running stitches to this side. And we will we'll, uh, digitize exactly the same kind of rectangle here. We have this. Now I will use a tool now. I will copy the settings of this segment here. I'll use this tool called the segment settings painter. So I'll copy the settings and you see there are short, shortcuts shift C and I will apply them here with shift V. So I have the, the result right there. Then I will select this segment. So this is one piece I will need to break it up first because I'm only interested uh, on this serif part for now. Convert this to a satin with two angle lines, one here, one here, and generate this one here. Also this will be tight and now you, you are able to understand why I made these elevations here. I will make this part now but only until in this area here so what i will do is i select the segment choose the the knife tool the slice tool and i'll slice it up slice up this part break it up all right so we have two pieces and i will use this piece and convert it to satin Placing an angle line here and one here. And we have this one done. I will need to go now. We need to place the exit point here. Travel with the run stitch tool towards this side. I will create this rectangle here as well in satin. Again, I start slightly outside, and on the inside, I will make this 
this way. Again, here we select Shift C and with Shift V apply the same settings. Now, let me think about this part. We will then uh, use satin stitches until here. Okay, and then I will travel up and make the rest. So, selecting this part, press D, add an angle line here, angle line there, and in between, you'll have a couple more, like so. Looks like generate the stitches. This looks good. Now I need to I need to travel up here, create a little tri uh, rectangle over there. So let's place the exit point over here. Use my my run stitch tool and travel to the side. And so mean for good precision something tool and digitize my rectangle piece over there shift V apply the same settings now I need to have a look I can embroider this piece now so I will convert it to satin add an angle line here and one here and in between, we'll place a couple more. Give a sharp turn like this. Generate. So we will set the exit point perhaps here. And now we are ready for the last piece. Select that segment and we will this R, this R piece of the R over there. Perhaps we can move the exit point over there. Now, once I'm done with that, I can select the segment. We will add lock stitches at the end, and we will also add insert a trim at the end. All right. We should be good here. This is the last segment. Maybe place the end point towards the inside. We will use a trim at the end and a lock stitch at the end. So we should have everything done. Let's switch on all the segments. We are basically done with this design. The last thing I need to make sure is to have a stop command before the puff foam part starts. So this is going to be after this segment here. I'm going to add a stop command here at the end that will make the machine stop so the, uh, the user can place the puff foam and then all the rest will be embroidered. Let's have a look in 3D and uh, slow motion. Make this 3D. I'll switch on the slow redraw and I will pull the, the handle here. You see we have the satin stitches covering the seam. Then we have complex fill from the center to the right and complex fill from the center to the left. And we have the black border around that whole piece. After that we have the little satin 
elements inside. And here's where the prof foam starts. So we have the run stitches tacking the foam towards the cap and covering the foam with these very tight satin stitches. And the way I have digitized it, or the plus part on the right hand side, the way I digitize it, you will be able to tear the foam along the edges of both of the R's. This is a conclusion of the 3D design intended to be embroidered on caps.